All right, we're recording. Hey everyone, my name is Alex Pavlock, systems engineer here with Fortinet. And today uh, we are doing a demonstration and recording this video for you guys. I'm going to pass it over to Simon. Awesome, thanks Alex. Uh, my name is Simon, I'm also a systems engineer. I work alongside Alex. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a demonstration of the 40 SAS C secure private access functionality. Um, ultimately, what this functionality does is it gives 40 SASE users to access uh, private resources or applications that are uh, sitting behind an on-premises firewall. Um, typically, uh, the best way for a remote user to be able to access uh, those resources is utilizing the VPN, but using the secure private access, a 40 SASE user has the ability to connect to our 40 SASE service, and then the 40 SASE actually establishes an IPsec tunnel to the on-premises firewall, which ultimately gives the users access to those applications uh, that are normally blocked away. In addition to that, the, the secure private access can actually be overlaid with ZTNA functionality to provide even more protection so that specific users with the proper uh, ZTNA tagging credentials can be accessed those resources. Today, we're not gonna go over that specific uh, functionality or component. Uh, we're going to just go over the setup process for establishing that uh, connection between the 40 SASE POPs and the on-premises FortiGate, and then showing how a user would theoretically access uh, the resources that are hitting be, uh, sitting behind the firewall. So for today's presentation, Alex's personal uh, uh, FortiGate that he has at his home will act as the on-premises infrastructure. I am located elsewhere, and I will have my own personal desktops act as if uh, I'm the remote user trying to access the, uh, the virtualized host that Alex has behind the FortiGate. So um, we can get right away. The first thing we're ultimately going to do is set up the IPsec tunnel. Um, we are going to be going through the wizard. Primarily, you're going to be setting this up in a hub and spoke. You can name it ultimately whatever you would like. Just for the sake of the demonstration, we're going to name it VPN5, set it up as, as a hub. The incoming interface is ultimately going to be your specific WAN interface that you have set up. Uh, the uh, authentication method, you can just leave it as pre-shared key. And then you, know, you can set the password to ultimately whatever you'd like. We're just going to name ours, Alex and Simon, so it's easy to remember. And then you're going to want to set up the tunnel interfaces. You have the ability to set this up ultimately however you'd like. Just for the sake of this demo, we're actually going to call it 10.11.11.1. And then our IP uh, netmask is going to be 10.11.11.0. I'm going to leave it as dot yeah, two. That's fine. And that's fine too. The local AS inter, uh, uh, is going to be very specific. So for this, it has to be 65001 to establish connectivity to the for SASE. Um, and then the local interface is going to be set to uh, whatever you want your internal uh, to be. Uh, you can actually set more than one if you would like. And then you can just leave the subnets as is. That's totally fine. For the spoke range prefix, it's going to be whatever IP address uh, sets you were using before. So in this particular scenario, it'll be 10.11.11.0 slash 24, and then for the smoke neighbor group, we're going to need to create one to make sure everything is good. So just like earlier, you're going to set the name to whatever you'd like. We're going to call it VPN5 just to for the sake of consistency. Remote AS is going to be 65001. You want to leave the interface blank. We are going to come back to this later, and then you do want to activate IPv4. You want to disable the attribute unchanged, and then you want to uh, have the route reflector client on, the graceful restart, next top self, and then the route refresh. Okay. After that, it's been created, select it, follow along, hit next. Just make sure review everything is okay. For the most part, everything is going to be good, so we can create it. There is a couple of things we do need to go into the specific user interface to make modifications on to make sure it's good. Specifically, we want to make sure that the IKE version is changed to two. We want to change the network overlay, the network ID, and then some of the mode configurations, which will allow the connectivity process. And then not only that, but we want to define the IP before, uh, 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 the, the the start and end IP addresses uh, for 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 the IPsec VPN tunnel. So. We're going to be going through that. Yep. And I'm taking these commands directly from the setup guide. Yep, the documents library. We are going to change the network ID to, to, uh, to be whatever uh, 100. You can change it to whatever, whatever you'd like. The same for the start and end IP. Um, 
this we're going to reference the IP addresses that we were using pretty much before. So it's going to be 10.11.11.10. Um, yep. And then the end is going to be 10.11.11.200. And then the net mask, this is just going to stay the same. It's going to be 255, 255, 2550. That's it. The next major configuration we want to set up is the loopback interface. We're primarily going to use this as a health check um, uh, uh, status. So uh, you can, if you already have one that you want to use a reference, you have the ability to do so. For, for us, we're just going to create one. So you can feel free to name it whatever you like. We're just going to call ours sassy loopback or sassy health, whatever you'd like. We do want to change the type to make sure it's a loopback interface. And then we want to change the IP to be something very specific. So in this situation, we're going to do 10.1.0-254.254. And enable ping, because we are going to be ping this. Set it to OK. And then we're good. We do want to make sure we also have the firewall policy configurations in place. Uh, some of these are already going to be pre-created because of the IPsec wizard creation. You can see that there. But we do need to create a new a firewall policy specifically for that health check. And then we want to disable the, uh, oh yeah, you're going to set source and destination to, to all, and then the service to all. And then you are going to want to disable the NAT. That's it. Last but not least, we want to make sure that the BGP configuration uh, for, for the routing, everything like that is set up properly. So you're going to go, uh, into this. If BGP actually doesn't show up on here, you will need to go into the systems and feature visibility and enable it. So that is something to know. It might not be visible right away from here. For the local AS, you are going to keep a 10.65001. Uh, and for the router ID, you're going to put the address for the uh, loopback uh, uh, interface that you created. Um, you can keep the neighbors if you want, but you can just, you don't have no need for it. So frankly, you can just delete it altogether. And then you do want to edit the neighbor groups. Earlier, we had uh, uh, a specific interface, and we we didn't uh, we didn't choose it. So we want to uh, identify what that's going to be. And in this situation, it would be the VPN tunnel that we created. And then we do need additional configuration changes made in regards to the CLI. So we can we can apply this first. Actually, Let, let's apply it uh, before we do that. And then we can go into the CLI. And I am again taking these commands directly from the setup guide. We want to edit some of the things that were in that Nate VPN5 neighbor group that we had set up. Simon, do you want to do the, I believe that should do it for the configuration on my FortiGate. Yep. Um, would you like to do the 40 Sassy portal? Yes, I will do that. Let me share my screen. Let me know when y'all can see it. Yep. Perfect. So uh, you're going to go log into the Fortisassi interface. The first thing you're really going to want to do is to create the hub. 
uh, that's going to be connecting to the Fortis SASE service. Um, you'll primarily find that here in the network section. You'll go into the private access tab. So the private access hub is ultimately where you're going to be creating this. Uh, feel free to name the hub whatever you'd like. Uh, just for the sake of being consistent, we're going to call this Alex and Simon. The remote gateway is going to be the IP address for the specific um, uh, firewall that we're trying to reach. And here we have this. I'm just going to copy and paste it. The pre-shared key we had is Alex and Simon. The BGP router ID subnet, this is ultimately going to be the subnet that you're going to use to define things. It does need to be different from the subnet that would be defined in regards to the BGP peer IP. So here I'm just going to put 10.12.11.0 slash 24. Whereas the BGP peer IP we had as 10.11.11.1. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's good. Yep. And then for the network overlay ID, Alex did change that earlier to 100. So we're going to keep that the same. And then the ASN is going to be the one we've been consistently using the entire time, which is 65001. The health check IP, this is where we're going to make sure that all the connections are good. We had that designated as the loopback interface. And it should be 10.1 dot zero dot two five four is that correct yes perfect and then we hit okay uh it will take a, a, a minute or two in order for this to set up once everything is good though everything should be green light here while we're waiting for that we do want to establish that a user could theoretically connect into this um so a couple of things do, uh, do need configuration so first things first is if you do not have a user information pre-populated uh, you would need to add in a user to the Fortis SASE service. So that can be a specifically an LDAP user, or you can create one local to the Fortis SASE directly. Just follow through the wizard where you're typing in the user's email and then their credentials. Um, if they don't have the agent loaded onto their device, you can install the agent and then type in the invitation code so that they're establishing connectivity to the Fortis SASE service. And then once it's created, it'll populate here. Um, I already have user information already set up here. That's shown at Fortinet.com, so it's pretty much good to go. Last but not least, just like how a, an ordinary firewall would uh, need a firewall policy is enabled to allow uh, traffic to pass through the firewall, we also do need a policy set up in regards to the Fortis SASE to allow traffic to go from the Fortis SASE to the private access hub that we've created. So here you can see uh, um, where you'd be, you'd be able to configure all those things. You can create your uh, own if you wanted to be very specific in regards to the scope of you know, where it's coming from, whether it's all users, VPN users specifically, if you had thin edge set up, it is currently in beta, but if you had thin edge set up, you would be able to do that. And then you have the destination set to uh, you know, th the entirety of the private access traffic, or you could theoretically specify if it's going to a specific destination. Uh, for the time being, we're actually going to reference the preset policy that we've created where it's pretty much like allowing all users to have access uh, to the private access traffic. And this should theoretically allow us to gain access to the uh, private access hub that's been set up. So uh, everything should be pretty much good to go for the most part. If we go back to the private access hub, here you can see that all the connections are up. If I actually double click on this, it'll provide me information in regards to how the Fortis SASE is connecting to all the various POPs and then ultimately VPNing to the uh, firewall that Alex had at his uh, location. So everything seems to be up and running. If you wanted a much more pretty view, you can go into theoretically the asset map, which will provide you a much more visual representation of all the POPs that the Fortis SASE is being run from, in addition to the hub that would be set up here. Uh, uh, in Chicago, we have a firewall named Alex and Simon. That's where uh, Alex is roughly located, so it's fairly accurate, and then we can go from there. Uh, we do want to test to make sure everything is good. I do have Forta Sassy already, uh, uh, Forta Sassy slash Forta Client Agent already lo loaded on. I do not uh, have connectivity to the VPN, so I'm not logged into the VPN for the Forta Sassy service. So if I try to go into the address that Alex has, for his uh, host, it should not let me onto the service. And as you can see, it's trying to go, it's circling, circling, nothing's working. So it will error out. So I'm going to log onto the service. There might be some connectivity issues as, it, as I'm switching uh, internet traffic and diverting it from my general internet service over to the uh, for Sassy. So let me do that right now.
to the Ford Assassi service. Let me actually pull up the window. I have connectivity. Everything is good. So I'm onto it. So let me try and go back and reestablish connection to the host. Oh, I go back to the tab. You can see I am now able to get a splash page for the VMware host that Alex has at his location. So everything is pretty much good to go for the most part. Um, yeah, all, the setup process is fairly simple as long as you're keeping track of those um, IP addresses that you're ultimately looking to use. And if you can, if you want to get really granular in regards to the specific resources that your users have access to, um, you can overlay it with the ZTNA functionality as described, or you can just use it as if a remote user is theoretically connecting uh, in VPN to uh, your, your firewall services. So uh, it's fairly straightforward. There is a guide on it. Uh, feel free to reference it. A lot of the uh, CLI commands, as Alex referenced, can be directly referenced there. You will need those in order to make this functionality work. Uh, but yeah, uh, Alex, any other final words? Nope. Um, yeah, fairly straightforward, as you can see. Um, just make sure that there are some very specific commands that you don't want to overlook. Uh, there's they are they are very easy to pass over as we'd have in the past uh, before this video. So, yeah, just make sure you're following the guide step by step, and it should be pretty easy. Well, cool. thanks everyone. Bye. -bye.